Hello, uh, welcome to the Vermander Curse. I had played this game, and now I am playing it again. That's about it. I'm going to do the reading. You wanted to see me, Mr. Vermander, sir? Hannah, my artifice month's profits as high as last month's. I've been looking over that piece of paper you gave me earlier, and I don't like all the numbers on it. I can't make heads or tails out of that dang thing. They raised the threshold of how much you need to donate in order to get your tax deduction, remember, sir? They did what? When was this? Sir, I've been reminding you about this for the last eight months. That's actually fine, though. You still end up saving way more money than if you didn't get the deduction, so... But the good lord is my witness. I am being swindled. I will not stand for this. No one gets over on JP for Amanda. No, sir. Or is... Not now, and not ever. But, sir... Now then, where have I been donating all my hard-earned money to again? The hospital, sir. Hospital? Which one? There's only one ho one in town, sir. The only hospital in this for second backwater town? I didn't still have the nerve to swindle me out of my money? Huh. Well, I know exactly how to handle a situation like this. Prepare the ritual, Hannah. And go fetch me my robes. The ritual? Minister for Mander, sir, please! This is entirely uncalled for! The people in the hospitals have nothing to you, sir! Besides the difference in profits between this month and last month is only about 1% less, sir! That's nice and all, Hannah. But I don't remember asking! Now, go! We don't have time to waste! Notify me immediately when everything is ready. Okay, sir. Ah, time to stare at this fire of victory. He didn't blink that time too, so I was quicker than before. It's a rat man. Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Anyone home? I hear you, I hear you. Give a girl a minute. This is an Anvark? An Anvark? Is that what it is? It might be. I don't know. Yeah. Ah, hello there. Dr. Edda, I presume. That's me. Who's asking? Fantastic! I am Moton, the nurse whose transfer request you received. Did she accept? Transfer request? What in the world are you talking about? You want to it? <laughs> Surely you've read the email concerning me. I don't get no regular internet out here, son of boy. The only thing we could get out here is that old satellite connection. And we ain't got that either. But if you were here to help, then I ain't about to complain. You got a lot to learn, so you better pay your attention, because I'm only saying this once. I'm all ears, Doctor. A page is coming. I'll write their information. Now on this here clipboard. Now, last time, I didn't really pay attention, but now, I'm going to pay attention. So, Mr. Boy needs a dosage at 12 a.m. Tammy got no dosage. She's infinitely good. Well, great. And so, and the next dosage for Jane Doe is 1 a.m. Wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. Hold on. 
Alright. Have I read this yet? I, I don't remember. When, part, when patients come in, I write the information down on this here clipboard. Wouldn't it be better to use a computer instead? No. The waiting room is over here. Ain't much to say about it. All the magazines are older than I am, and ain't none of them worth reading no more. Oh. We got eight rooms. Three are occupied and the rest eight. Mr. Langboy is over in room 1A. He had a pretty bad back injury, but we fixed him right up. Miss Tampa Giles is in room 5A. She needed one of them teeth pulled, and we ain't got many options for his teeth. So I gave her some of that old fashioned medicine. I kept under the sink. <sighs> She'll be a little dizzy for a while, but everything else was smooth and sick. Impressive! There's a woman over here in 4A2. Well, if they cut her hand up a real bad on her job, they try to hide it. Her boss found out a sentry here. I managed to figure out her name, so I wrote her down as J. Doe and patch her up. Ah, uh, a mystery! I wonder who she is. We ain't no one has too many questions around here, Mr. Morton. We're here to help. Got it? I understood, Doctor. Sorry, something's wrong with my breathing. Not like I'm suffocating. I don't know, it's just something. It's probably gas trying to escape. We got two bathrooms, an operating room, something like a kitchen. Oh, excellent. Lights in here don't work half the time. We keep up medicine supply and the oil, but most of the bottles are empty because the budget ain't paid to refill them. And there ain't nothing ever in the fridge, so don't even bother checking. Oh. Does anything this hospital function as attended? Oh, really? That's about it. Let's head all back to the front desk so we can get you a sign in and start for a shift. That old sign in cheat somewhere over there. I suggest you go ahead and start searching for it yourself because I ain't about to come look for it. I just said, Doctor, I'll find it! In the meanwhile, I better go make my rounds and check on the patients. Come and get me if you need something. Doctor, I mean no offense, but this workstation isn't very well set up. Haven't you ever considered better organization for such important documents? I am pa getting paid to organize things, son of all. Besides, I know exactly where things are when I need them. Well, if it works for you, then I guess I'll just have to adapt. 1A, 5A, 4A, so rooms change, okay. Ah, they weren't in this room before. It's all randomized. Everything alright in here? I'm fine, Doc. Matter of fact, I feel like I could walk out of here right now. Ha ha ha! See, he can't even laugh about it hurting him. This is exactly what I said. Lang, baby, please, hey, please stay off the roof. It's dangerous. We could pay someone else to clean the gutters. But did he listen? No. He waited till I left for work. And then tried to get up there himself. One little gust of wind and next thing you know, BAM! Straight into the edges. You know, I could have done it if, it, if the wind had picked up. That's not the point. You shouldn't have been up there in the first place. Doctor, can you please give this man something to fix his terminal lack of common sense, please? Sorry, honey. We but we ain't got nothing to fix that. Now, you two try to take it easy, alright? I'll be back later on. <laughs> Imagine the doctor comes in talking to you and the doctor just yawns. How funny would that be? <laughs> well, uh, oh, yeah, I don't see what's bad about it. How you doing, dear? I'm 
Okay. That is fine, though. I got enough to worry about. I'll grow back good as new. God, thank you. You are most welcome, dear. Try to get some rest. I'll check back in later. Yes, yes. How are you feeling, dear? Hey, Dr. Edda. What are you doing here? So I ain't sober up yet, huh? No. That's fine, dear. At least I do think going to bother you no more. Just give it some time and try to get some rest, okay? Before I continue, now. Got something off my mouth. You're weird. Okay. Alright. Alright, that's everyone. I better get on back to Mr. Morton. Dr. Edda! The, the phone started ringing while you were gone, so I answered it. Yeah. The caller won't stop go- ah, Sorry. The caller won't stop going on and on about rituals and demons. Among other things that I don't understand. I think that may be best if you talk to her. <sighs> There's always something. Honey, honey, slow down. Ain't none of this making sense. Please, you have to get out of here right now. My boss is summoning an actual genuine demon, and now you're all in danger. Uh huh. And who do you work for again? J.P. from Andrew, ma'am. Who is that, Doctor? He's on Rich City Boy who moved here, uh, moved out here when he inherited his family's estate. A lot of folks around here have to pay him rent just because his family owns the land. Yes, that's him exactly. I don't know all the details, but it's a blood pact and a demon and a curse and all kinds of other stuff. You need to leave now. Once the clock strikes ten, you won't be able to leave. Honey, that's less than two minutes. Ain't no way we're getting everyone out of here that fast. Ah, oh, goodness. I didn't expect the stakes to be this high on my first night. But I'm committed at this point. Is there anything we could do to help our situation? I didn't go snooping into a few old journals kept by the Vermanders. Based on what I've read, if you can make it to sunrise, it doesn't believe. That's like 5 o'clock, I think. But there's a bunch of rules you have to, you would need to follow in order to keep yourself safe. For example, every hour after the sunrise, the devil will try to enter the place it was summoned to. It will travel down the nearest hallway in search of blood. Specifically, your blood. Its own rules prevent it from opening doors to search for you. So keep those closed. Where were you both in right now? Reset. The reception area. You will need to keep that in mind. Alright? When Demon arrives, make sure you're all in the same room as when the ritual started. If someone isn't, the Demon will know. And once it knows where someone is, close the doors and we'll stop it. If you're ready, I can tell you you what to expect once 10 o'clock hits. I ain't about to let no Demon run rough shit. My house is healing. Just tell us what we need to do, honey. Okay, here's what's gonna happen first. The devil places a line for some windows for some reason, alright? I'll try to use his powers to open up windows around itself. You're gonna need, and I cannot stress this enough, you're gonna need to close any and all windows before the hour is up. They won't open, the devil gets stronger, and you don't want that, alright? If you finish with everything you need to do, hour is up, try setting out the clock. I'm sure it'll help us extra time faster. I'll stay on the line just in case you need me to repeat something. Good luck and please be careful! Doctor, are things usually this hectic around here? Not really. We usually ain't got no more than about one or two patients here at once. We got three in here tonight. That's not really what I meant. And now the closed windows. What time is it? It's 
10. I don't need to worry about any of those. Oh no. The kids, Lang, do you even think about them? Their little heads are proper words sick by now. Oh no. I owe an apology for making them worry. No, you want to. <sighs> you two are right in here. Yeah, we're fine. Uh huh. Well, holler if you need something by right now. Mm. I was about to look at a TV. You just look at the window. I tired. Oh, um, work? Sleep for a minute, then hand caught. You fell asleep at work and I saw the hair go like that? Yes. Oh, you poor thing. Well, at least try to get some rest while you're here, alright? Oh, yeah, the store was left open. Tammy sits, happily humming to herself. Ain't no open door window over here. No window. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. What would happen if I even left the power? I need to, like, do another playthrough and see what happened. Maybe it'll start... Other clickable? Bruh. So what's the kitchen for? I don't know. This time she survives. What's going to happen next? There's something about the devil's power to reserve TV signals, right? We'll turn on any TV we can manage to get access to. They never show anything besides static once they control, but that's still bad. If it happens, just turn TV off. They'll kick it for a while. But don't leave your TVs up. That's control on, alright? It won't end well. Doctor, you look tired. That's because I am. Then let me hit on things this hour. We should rest. Ah! Doctor, why is this hospital in the state that it's in? What do you mean? And what do you mean by that? Well, there's hardly any supply have any supplies here. And you seem to be understaffed. Plus, we're lacking a lot of modern equipment. Mr. Morton, we're in a small hospital in the name of a smaller town. We ain't got much to work with here. We take what we have and make it work. I see. So right, TV stuff. Now, here's the problem. It's almost 12 a.m. for Lang Boyd. So maybe if he complains? The job, Lang! Now you're probably gonna have to miss work. Who knows how they react? Heck, no! And now I'm missing work! I don't know. We'll be fine. Watch. Go morning, I'm gonna walk out of here good as new. <sighs> I sure hope so. It's 11, so I don't think I should be able to do it. You know, I completely forgot to look for that. But you know, I don't think there's a TV that I run. Now that could be it. How are you feeling, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Excellent. That's exactly what we want to hear. Oh, she wandered off. I was coming to visit her. I don't hear static. Maybe that's what the other rooms are for. 
Hey, why is it so dark in here? I'm actually not sure, ma'am. But strange things are happening tonight. I need to get back to your room, please. <laughs> My bad. I'll go back now. Um, I don't think there's any other thing to worry about, so I'll talk to her. <laughs> Alright. That should be it, right? Hoping that back injury doesn't need to be... It's not 12 yet, it's like 11, so um... It's 1 a.m. Okay. Like that. Time was 12. All the windows are closed. Television's off. But the other guy did not show up yet. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're d ah, we're doing this. It's pretty great. I was wondering if I need to leave the door open for the people to go through or something. That was me not understanding what to do from my first playthrough. Here's what's gonna happen this time. The demo will try to draw power from the light to get uh, access to. Right? You know it's inside a room trying to swipe a power with the lights are flickering. When it happens, all you need to do is enter the room, close the door, and shut your eyes for a few seconds. You're really gonna need to use the space inside your mind to focus on this one. You know it's a word with the lights are flickering. And make sure you do it right, okay? If you don't, then... I ain't just tired anymore. You can let me handle things this time. Sounds good to me, Doctor. You can take the sour. And then I'll take the next. Hmm. First room seems pretty good. No flickering. I'll head back there. Oh. My eyes don't work as good as they are anymore. Oh, she's out here. <gasps> it's noon already. That's midnight, darling. Oh. <laughs> here, past in rest in in long time. You have started slipping yet. I think my back's beginning to start hurting again. Because I bet I really wore off or something. And that was my big clue that I needed to get back to the dosage thing. The pain meds are kept here. It's time for some more pain, man. Just in time. My back was starting to act up again. Whew. Just promise me you won't go doing something this reckless again, alright? As of tonight, I'm officially staying far, far away from the river. <coughs> Anyways, uh, as I was saying, as of tonight, I'm officially staying far, far away from the roof and ladders, too. Unless we can save some extra money if I... Lang! Aha! I'm kidding! Don't look at me like that! I wanna wanna look at the old boy like that when he's joking or something like that. And now, to FaceTime itself. To f 
force it to go into the future. Is there a new dosage? No, it's 10 a.m. is done. Now there's a 1 a.m. for the other person. <sighs> mm What's going to happen next? You'll be surprised by how much of them has power to with electronics. You can get access to the phone lines and try to gain power too. If you notice the phone continue to be ringing, then that's exactly what it's trying to do, alright? Now this goes out crazy, but you need to pick up the phone and listen. Pay attention, because this part's important. If you hear anything, and I mean anything, on the other end, you gotta recite this mantra. Brett's is not welcome here, they must depart immediately. Don't worry, you remember it when the time comes. But if the silence on the other end of the phone, they get. Right. Silence means he hasn't properly found out the phone's location yet. Yeah, you don't want to give me the clues, alright? So, what about you, sonny boy? Huh? There's a lot of other places you could have transferred to. I ain't ha yet figure out why you went and pick this one. I thought this would be the best decision for my daughter and I in the long run. A nice quiet town of countryside sounded ideal for us. Of course, it wasn't as quiet as I thought it would be, but it's still nice. <laughs> well, Mr. Morton, if we make it out of here, I'm following you both a nice little walk or a tail party. <laughs> now, that would just be lovely, Doctor. Fossil light. Jasmine? What? Thanks for staying here with me. I'm sorry to put you through all of this. I'm just glad you're okay. We can deal with everything else later on. No TV. <laughs> ah! Go away. Hurting is again. Anything to do, please? Alright, I got it. Hello? Is this where y'all keep the shredded cheese? I was told there's nothing to refrigerate, so probably not. For now, though, I need to get back to your room, please. Hehe, <laughs> my bad. I'll go back now. Make a quick visit to her. Well, man, I feel my head's finally started to clear. That stuff works wonders, I'm telling you. I had a teeth pulled and didn't feel a thing. Or I could do this. What happened if I were to click on someone other than the injured person? Madam, I brought you all you your scheduled paid medication. Yes, good. I can see no TV for her. Got it. No open windows. Ah, everything's perfect. That makes any sense. Oh uh, no, this day. Ah, uh, yes, two o'clock. Yep. Mm hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Venus, that was gonna try. We're doing some candles. It has the power to manifest them inside his area of influence. It's vital and very important that if you see one, you can see into it. If you let it keep burning, then they will be able to draw power from it. You won't try anything new out there against this part. So you don't have to worry about any more new rules. Oh, and I almost forgot something. This part's important too. Whatever you do, make sure you don't leave the candle on. I'm not going to talk about the power going off. Okay. Both asleep. Seems like we can't communicate with anyone anymore. I wish it just like answer the phone and allow us to see if we hear something. That would have made the game better. The mistakes more believable. Racer on the floor. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, all of it. It's just one, dude. Should have been the candle, but whatever. at least one of each. Boy! No, no open window for you. Uh, no, no, no lights for you either. Turn that off. How about, how about no? 
Is it at the... I don't know. That's... About it. I feel like the window is the only thing that has copies. I'm not sure if I know about more flickering and such. There's never been multiple of the candles I'm aware of. Shit. Um. Damn, we're still in her death. I'm guessing what happened is I, I saw her character and I didn't care to check properly. Why is the window closed? There's a light disturbance over there. I check these, I think I have. How are y'all still sleeping? That's how you do it. That's it. A dark violation of the Vermander Pact. No blood has been spilled that night. The most important part of the pact had not been fulfilled, which meant that the agreement was now null and void. With the generation being enslaved to the Vermander family, the Diamond was finally free. And though it did not have much time left, it knew exactly how it wished to spend its final moments. Hannah, what in the world are you doing back here this early? Hannah? Oh, it's you. Don't you have some work to be doing? What do you want? What are you- Why are you looking at me like that? Don't you go forgetting that you work for me, mister. I command you to- I command you to get out of here! Why won't you listen to me, you stupid- The angry howls of demon echoed throughout- the town that morning, and then the estate fell deathly quiet. As it turned out, Hannah had left the Vermander estate that previous night. She had been far too tired to return home after f feeding instructions for the phone all night, and said she fell asleep in the manor's empty rooms. She was awakened by awful noises emitting from the upstairs. Hannah climbed up the stairs and quickly made her way over to the office. Inside, there lay J.P. Vermander, beaten, unmoving, and absolutely mangled. But against all the odds, 
He was still alive. Hannah had a choice to make. A large part of her wanted to simply leave him there. To give him the same disrespect as regard they showed to others, she turned to leave. But deep down, she knew that this wasn't the right thing to do. As bad as, she, as, as bad as he was, she would not stoop to his level. So instead, she called for help. In an ironic turn of events, J.P. Vermander's life was saved at the very same possible he had tried to rid himself of. Despite their rightful justified anger at the man, Dr. Etta and Nurse Morton treated him no different than any other patient, and he was soon on the road to a full recovery. During his stay in the hospital, he was given a room near the front. Day after day, he watched the patients as they came and went through. He watched as the hospital's only doctor and sole nurse did their best to help every person that arrived, and as he watched, he realized something. Those confusing numbers on a little piece of paper actually meant nothing. Really? Those numbers represented actual people. People, lives, and emotions. People that just wanted to get the help they deserved. It took a near-death experience at the hands of an angry demon and a, an intensive stay in the hospital. But J.P. finally felt something that no Fermander had felt for a very long time. Remorse. And he vowed he would do everything in his power to try and make amends. Not what I expected, but alright. <laughs> However, due to the pact being broken, most of the wealth of power it granted was soon lost to crippling debt. With no other options, JP sold off his estate and assets to pay his dues. And the last remaining bit of his fortune was donated to the hospital. As a sign of goodwill, Dr. Edda let him stay in one of the fake rooms until he could get back on his feet. He is currently working as a food delivery driver to make ends meet as he wasn't qualified for anything else. But he does miss his money and his old lifestyle. In the end, he just fake would still be alive. Morton settled into his new job as nurse just fine. Despite the rough first night, he grew to love the strange new town and its people. In the end, he knew that the decision to move here was one of the was the best one for both him and his daughter. Ed is still the best and only doctor in town. Of course she's the best doctor in town, because she's the only one. She plans to use the donation money to renovate the hospital so they can provide the best care possible for years and years ahead. And now that they had an actual budget, she decided to hire an accountant. Hannah happily accepted the position, as her old job was no longer available. Yeah, of course that makes sense. She's glad to finally have a boss that appreciates her hard work. And though it took a while, she did eventually forgive her remainder for all his misdeeds. The hospital had a bright future ahead of it. And everyone was on a good terms. And that's all that mattered. The Vermander Curse. The End. I don't think there's any other endings that could be possible. If there's just two. Actually, there could be a death ending. But do I want to do that? Not really. Goodbye and have a fun time.